Hey internets, so you've probably heard of WikiLeaks. A quick history lesson reveals their very controversial nature. Led by Julian Assange, WikiLeaks has published cable leaks of mostly classified documents, mostly from questionable governments that probably should have never been classified to begin with. The purpose and point being to hold large institutions and the people at the head of them accountable for trying to cover up their misbehavior, uncovering government and corporate misconduct. A few big ones included the 2007 Guantanamo Bay files detailing the treatment of prisoners during Bush's War on Terror, the 2008 Sarah Palin email dump, the 2010 Iraq war crime footage leak, the 2016 Hillary Clinton DNC and Podesta email hack, showcasing some of their, um, well let's just say, cozy relationship with various banking elites and mainstream media figures, and of course the 2017 Volt 7 leak that revealed the capabilities of various CIA hacking tools. But on top of that, Assange has been very critical of what he calls tabloid journalism, with some particularly spicy words for mainstream corporatist media coming from him, such as, One of the hopeful things I've discovered is that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. The media could have stopped it if they had searched deep enough. If they hadn't reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped it. Now, what Assange is referring to here is largely what he refers to as scientific journalism, a journalistic style that he proposes that would fix a lot of these problems, where secondary editorialized sources must always be expected to be backed up by primary sources, designed to allow people to be able to independently verify whether or not the evidence aligns with the editorial take. Or as Julian Assange described it, just like how a research paper on, say, DNA would be required to publish their full research data and methodology so that other biologists could replicate the study and check it for errors and improve on it, Assange would like the same standard applied to journalism. For instance, a report on a fire in a nearby national forest should include footage of the fire. It's a style of journalism that places the importance of primary sources and data over the importance of secondary sources and opinion editorials. Seems pretty reasonable, right? I mean, that would mitigate a lot of the problems with modern day journalism. If you have an opinion, back your opinion up with the facts and evidence you drew that opinion from so that other people can check it out for themselves rather than just taking your word for it. Well, unfortunately, scientific journalism is also exactly the opposite of the journalism that Wikipedia currently perpetuates. And that's why this video is largely going to be centered around criticism of Wikipedia. I've done this before almost a year ago with my video on Wikipedia's Gamergate article, but that's just one bad page. So it's time to dive into what specifically the critical flaws of Wikipedia's policies are. With the first major flaw being that their primary source policy contradicts neutral point of view. You see, the rules of Wikipedia place the importance of sources completely backwards. They consider secondary sources to be the most important, and restrict the use of primary sources such as raw data and scientific studies and research papers, unless that data is contextualized and edited by an approved secondary source. Well, what does that mean? It means that facts are not facts until an approved enlightened expert by the Wikipedia Tribunal tells you what you are supposed to think about those facts. No really, unfortunately that's pretty much their policy. If you try to bring up evidence that a statement on Wikipedia is false, and it doesn't come from an approved secondary source, your fact will be rejected as original research. This can result in some pretty stupid interactions. For instance, say a prominent online influencer makes a controversial statement on their blog, and then a clueless journalist who works for a so-called reliable source decides to make inflammatory and politically partisan accusations against this person based on what they wrote on their blog, and they aren't exactly honest about what they wrote. You would not be able to use that blog as a source to counter the journalist's accusations, no matter how obviously false those accusations are. This means that all a biased editor has to do to push a false narrative is to find a journalist whose opinions more or less agree with their bias, which these days, considering how very low quality journalism is, this isn't exactly difficult to find. Effectively ejecting a form of bias by proxy and completely circumventing the neutral point of view policy. And if there's any primary sources or evidence out there which objectively proves said journalist wrong, guess what? In Wikipedia's rules, the journalist wins. A prime example of this can still to this day be found in the subject of my previous video on Wikipedia, which was again the Gamergate article and how it canonized a false narrative by treating poorly reasoned and dishonest media pundit opinions as if they were somehow gospel truth. All one had to do was look at actual organized sections of the Gamergate community, such as Gamergate.me, to see that what was actually going on is people in Gamergate were criticizing journalists, and rather than reporting on that criticism honestly, the journalists instead opted to slander Gamergate by painting the entire consumer revolt in the colors of the worst 
most of its members. So even though only a very small percentage, if even, of Gamergate was actively or actually engaged in any real harassment, journalists reported on Gamergate as if those people were the entire movement, by omitting the rest of the movement of what they had to say from their reports. The Wikipedia page, of course, uncritically and mindlessly parrots these blatant lies of omission. WikiLeaks also called this out on Twitter, which provides some extra spicy red pills when you search for Gamergate-related tweets by them. This results in some pretty silly things on the internet. For instance, the Conservapedia article on Gamergate is actually far more accurate, which is completely insane when you think about it, because Conservapedia is an extremely biased website. To their credit, they admit to being right-wing biased, I mean, it's called Conservapedia, it's in the name after all, but what's more interesting is specifically why Conservapedia's version of the article is more accurate. The reason is simple, it's because Conservapedia, for all of its problems, allows her primary sources a lot more leniently than Wikipedia. Wikipedia does, and it allows them to use it as long as it contains some facts that are relevant to the subject, which means they allow the Gamergate.me website, created by the actual GG movement, to be used as a source. What? You can use a website written by Group X to determine the beliefs of Group X more accurately than some lame opinion editorial written about Group X? Truly amazing. What this proves is that Wikipedia does not have an effective neutrality policy. Their NPOV policy only applies to editors, but not to the sources those editors are using, which is very easy to abuse because, again, the editors just have to find a so-called reliable source that agrees with their personal bias. Now, to Wikipedia's credit, they do admit this is a problem with their website in their article on verifiability, not truth, where they concede that sources do sometimes get things wrong from time to time. Wikipedia defends their decision by effectively saying that the reliable sources are right more often than not, so it's okay. But this immediately then begs the question, what exactly is a so-called reliable source according to Wikipedia? And that unfortunately brings us to our second flaw with Wikipedia. Their method for determining which sources are reliable is totally subjective nonsense. So ask yourself this, what page on the internet contains the largest amount of pure industry-grade propaganda? You could make a pretty good argument that a very strong contender for that title is this page right here on Wikipedia, specifically the Perennial Sources section. This is the web page that Wikipedia uses to post their decisions on what is and what is not a reliable source, and contains a lot of links as to why and various talk pages about the sources. And the problem is the reasoning they use here is basically complete nonsense. It's actually impressive to some extent just how much total garbage is compacted into one page here. For the sake of simplicity, I'm only going to go over a few of them. Starting with WikiLeaks themselves. Yep, that's right, WikiLeaks, at least according to Wikipedia, is not a reliable source. Now, admittedly part of this is simply due to their primary sources policy, but it's a little bit deeper than that, and there's a lot more dishonesty going on here. For instance, look at their main claim. Some editors believe that documents from WikiLeaks fail the verifiability policy because WikiLeaks does not adequately authenticate them, and there are concerns regarding whether the documents are genuine or tampered. Really, that's interesting. Concerns on whether or not WikiLeaks documents are genuine or tampered. So how well does that statement stack up to reality? I mean, it's a fair question to ask. What if Julian Assange was in fact publishing fake documents all this time, and was in fact the greatest troll of our day? No one should just be blindly believed after all, so out of all the leaks I mentioned at the start of this video, how many turned out to be false? The answer to that is, of course, zero. WikiLeaks has a perfect record. They have never published tables that were not genuine and have a perfect score regarding authentications. And how do we know this? Well, first is just the obvious rational question that any reasonable person can ask. If WikiLeaks cables were ever not genuine, then why haven't any of these agencies ever successfully sued WikiLeaks for defamation? If WikiLeaks was just releasing bogus cables, it would be free money for the organizations who are targeted by the leaks. Instead, we see a very different type of court case happen. The US government, for example, pushed to win a case that allowed them to pretend that classified documents were still secret despite them having been published by WikiLeaks, which obviously they would not have needed to do if the leaks were fake. There is also the fact that several other news organizations have checked WikiLeaks documents and found them to be genuine, or at the very least they've written articles about WikiLeaks cables in the context of them being assumed to be true. This includes PBS conceding that previous leaks were genuine when talking about the CIA leaks, the New York Times wrote an opinion editorial that slammed WikiLeaks for alleged ethics, but begrudgingly admitted that the DNC email leaks were genuine. In an article by NPR about the damage WikiLeaks has caused to national security, it is simply assumed that the leaks are genuine and no attempt is made to discredit them. Same thing happens again with routers in regards to reporting on the Saudi Arabia leak. It is simply reported as a factual occurrence. No question is raised in regards to the authenticity of the cables. And last one I will mention is a technology review article of WikiLeaks published by MIT, 
which like the others does not dispute the validity of leaked classified documents. You get the idea, all those rumors about WikiLeaks supposedly publishing fake cables or being a Russian asset just because the TV series World Tomorrow aired on RT are all pretty much just unsubstantiated claptrap. WikiLeaks has never been caught publishing fabricated documents, they have never been caught not trying to authenticate everything, and you can even try searching for any reputable evidence that they have, you won't find any. It's a pretty rock solid organization. This doesn't mean WikiLeaks will never publish false information in the future, but it does mean that so far they have never done so. TLDR, WikiLeaks is an extremely reliable source, these guys are not screwing around. So it appear that this statement right here that Wikipedia has come up with is mostly just flat out false. They just kind of pulled it out of thin air, I don't know. And just for completion's sake, I looked over some of the reasons Wikipedia themselves gave on their talk pages just to give them a chance. And what I found was even more ridiculous. There was some subjective conjecture about document authenticity without any real evidence of Wikileaks fabricating anything. A nice fallacy of relevance about Wikileaks being controversial, therefore questionable, which of course is ridiculous because controversy is independent of truth them doubling down on the idea that facts are not facts until an approved expert tells you what you are supposed to think of those facts, them claiming WikiLeaks has a poor reputation, which technically that is true a lot of corrupt institutions do not like WikiLeaks, but again the only reputation that matters here is whether or not what they publish is true. There's also just Wikipedians bickering over total unrelated nonsense here like re you aren't probably indenting your posts. The only concern these talk pages brought up that makes any sense at all is concerns over copyrighted content. That's really just a technicality, again nothing to do with whether or not it's true. To put it short, no, Wikipedia does not provide any evidence or any valid reason at all to suspect that Wikileaks is publishing false documents. At the end of the day, it's just bureaucratic nonsense and mental gymnastics so that they can claim that an organization which has never published anything untrue is somehow of questionable integrity and reliability, which is just flat out gaslighting. It's just flat out not true. And this is just kind of a drop in the bucket of what allows biased editors to abuse the system and completely circumvent NPOV by simply using sources that they agree with. But what about the rest of the perennial sources page? Well, the reason it's basically just highly condensed propaganda is because much of the poor reasoning skills from Wikipedia community is also present in many other decisions. Another obvious example is the New York Post being unreliable, while the New York Times is rated as reliable. Both of these sources have a mixture of factual and opinion reporting. There is very little reason to have one as reliable and the other not other than the fact that the New York Times leans to the left and thus has a bias that agree with Wikipedia editors on average. In this case, the talk pages called New York Post a tabloid and didn't really elaborate further on that. While technically, the New York Times can also be called a tabloid based on that reasoning. If they want to say it makes sense to mark the New York Post as unreliable for being right-wing biased, then they must also agree that it makes sense to mark the New York Times as unreliable for its left-wing bias. They do go after New York Post for their questionable article on Kamala Harris, but then again, the same scrutiny could be applied to the New York Times for initially lying about the Hunter Biden laptop leaks. Another example is the Epic Times versus the Atlantic. Now, the subject of NTD TV is another case I could go on a massive tangent on, and it's another subject I could probably make an entire video on. It's an alternative news source that has been heavily slandered by the establishment. But to keep things brief, Epic Times and NTD has a right-wing bias, Atlantic has a left-wing bias. Atlantic is allowed, but NTD and Epic Times are not. Why? Well, because according to Wikipedia's users, it's because Epic Times and NTD are biased. And Atlantic is not, so why don't they apply the same standards to all sources for determining reliability? And again, the reasoning they give in the talk pages is completely arbitrary and nonsensical. To put it simply, Wikipedia applies much harsher scrutiny to sources that the top editors and administrators personally dislike, while giving a free pass and much more leniency to sources that are largely pro-establishment. So what we are seeing here are just double standards, with higher levels of scrutiny being applied to sources that they don't agree with. These people do not shy away from using bad information and poor reasoning to defend their choices on which sources are reliable and which ones are not. The many errors of the perennial sources page reveals a hint into how the third major problem with Wikipedia came to be, which is Wikipedia's heavy pro-establishment DNC bias. Let me go straight in with the big question then. Um, can we trust what we read in Wikipedia, the website you co-founded? Well, you can trust it to give a reliably establishment point of view on pretty much everything. Of course, that's not how Wikipedia used to be. Well, let, let's get into that because that's fascinating. How, how do you feel that it's changed from the moment when you were involved to the modern version of Wikipedia? When Wikipedia was just entering the public eye, um, it was still committed to neutrality. 
So what you just saw was a segment from an interview with Wikipedia's co-founder, Larry Sanger, on Unheard TV. It's actually a pretty fairly informative interview, and I will link it at the end of this video for anyone who wants to watch the full thing. I do recommend it. The main point is that Wikipedia didn't always used to be horrible. In fact, the Mises Institute, which is a fairly firmly anti-state establishment think tank, even wrote a fairly positive review of Wikipedia back in 2007. Here's a neat trick you can actually do to really verify this. Take any political article and go back in history to the early 2000s if you can. Sometimes you may need to manually enter in a higher number into your address bar here. And what I've found is articles predating 2012 are significantly less biased and more succinct. So how exactly did Wikipedia go from being a free and open encyclopedia focused on summarizing useful information to the nonsense and propaganda it is today? Well, looking back at the reliable sources list, one thing I couldn't help but notice is that the more of an authoritarian left establishment bias, such as being pro-DNC a source is, the more likely it is to be marked as reliable. And the more anti-establishment or right-leaning a source is, the more likely a source is to be considered unreliable. News outlets that try to be neutral as possible often get marked as no consensus. This is a very troublesome pattern, because what should matter the most is, of course, whether or not what a source is publishing is based on facts and evidence. But of course, from what we have seen thus far, especially with the nonsensical lies about WikiLeaks on Wikipedia, that's just not the case here. And I am not the first person to notice this problem. One study by Shane Greenstein looked into this bias by comparing Wikipedia to the less open but more professional Encyclopedia Britannica. It found that Wikipedia articles have a significantly higher degree of pro-DNC party bias than Britannica does. And in a more recent review of this study by the critic, they took things a step further and examined bias within the social structure of Wikipedia. They found that Wikipedia's banned depreciated sources list included 16 right-leaning sources and only one left-leaning source, which of course is Occupy Democrats, which if you're familiar with Occupy Democrats, that's not exactly surprising. Occupy Democrats is pretty much an intentional disinformation mill, so we are clearly looking at a very auth-left establishment bias here. They also noted that the methodology behind what is and what is not a viable source is completely subjective to the various fallacy-filled arguments of top editors. Of course, the standard cope argument here that some far lefties might use at this point is to say that, well, reality has a leftist pro-DNC bias. Sorry, but no, that's not the case. Ad Fontis Media, which measures media bias against verified facts, actually rates many leftist sources that are concurrently allowed on Wikipedia as less factual than some of the sources Wikipedia bans, and that's just one example. Many others have noticed the same thing. NTD News being one of them, surprise, surprise. Another study dives into how things are kept this way, which is the rise and decline of an open collaboration system, how Wikipedia's reaction to popularity is causing its decline. This study found that due to what can be called socio-technical gatekeeping, over time Wikipedia has been reverting high-quality edits by newcoming users more and more often. And this is a 2012 study published in Sage Journal, by the way, so things have almost certainly gotten a lot worse since then. It comes as no surprise then that Steven Crowder was unable to add factual statements to various Wikipedia articles when he did an episode about it. Anything that Wikipedia admins and top editors don't like will be removed for reasons hidden behind layers upon layers of bureaucracy, regardless of whether or not the additions are factual and high quality. But peeling that bureaucracy back reveals that it's all just completely subjective. They simply ban anything that doesn't agree with their political bias, and then they try to cover up their bias by hiding behind these contradictory and bureaucratic rules. You also have the problem of paid editors who make it their actual job to sit on certain Wikipedia pages to try and push narratives that are favorable to their institution or political party. The funny thing is, this actually used to be considered a conspiracy theory, but now it's just completely blown up and down and out in the open. You can actually search for hired brutes to handle Wikipedia pages for you and push whatever narrative you desire, and they'll do it. And you can probably place a winning bet that most world governments has their hand in this cookie jar of paid editing. Pretty dang wild, honestly. From all this, we can see how Wikipedia's subjective secondary source policy, or unscientific journalism as you could call it, has completely backfired on them and created a very anti-NPOV environment. So what does all of this mean? Just to summarize everything, because I know it's a lot to take in, what's essentially going on here is that over time Wikipedia has become more biased, less factual, and more susceptible to influence from large political and corporatist organizations. Which then of course just makes Wikipedia even more biased and even less factual in a vicious cycle where everyone essentially is fighting for their own version of the truth. And of course this very heavily contributes to partisan journalism and propaganda, because Wikipedia is regularly used as the internet's go-to trove of information. A lot of these journalists will just check their 
other information from Wikipedia as well. This creates a culture of circular reporting where the people who believe and trust Wikipedia are basically just regurgitating each other, also known as cytogenesis, with no idea of where their so-called facts even originated from. Sources and editing have all become gatekept to support one view, and Wikipedia has effectively become a DNC propaganda website by proxy. Though it comes as no surprise then that a lot of bread tubers whose ideologies are centered on this kind of sophistry and cherry picking absolutely love Wikipedia's political sections because it's basically confirmation bias crack cocaine for them. This is also why the least accurate articles on Wikipedia are those that cover movements or organizations that exist as criticism of establishment media, because they rely on the establishment media to report honestly on a subject that makes them look bad, which of course for obvious reasons they will never do. For example, the Project Veritas page is full of nonsense for largely the same reason that the Gamergate article is full of nonsense. It sources the very media pundits that Veritas is criticizing, so of course the page is going to basically read like, the fox did nothing wrong, source fox that is watching the hen house. That's not to say Veritas can't be improved, it doesn't have their own problems. Project Veritas's main website is pretty terribly designed, and they don't always publish the full and unedited versions of their leaks, which makes them kind of an inferior wannabe version of WikiLeaks in my opinion, but they aren't nearly as bad as their Wikipedia page claims. This all begs the question, can Wikipedia be fixed? I mean, it's not all Wikipedia's fault to be honest, part of it is just that journalists themselves in the modern day are pretty low quality, and a lot of it is just Wikipedia reflecting that. But Wikipedia could definitely improve by recognizing these problems instead of just ignoring them. If the administrators and owners want to make their site better, they have to accept the reality that Wikipedia has become a battleground for propaganda. A hint of how they could improve things can be shown in the fact that all of these problems really only negatively affect articles that deal with subjective or abstract, often controversial subjects like politics, philosophy, economics, and ethics. Wikipedia is still actually a pretty decent source for things like physics and astronomy because the academic and establishment consensus on these subjects generally all always includes their primary sources along with their secondary sources, and that gives a hint for the first improvement Wikipedia could use, which is that the owner should acknowledge that the doctrine of false balance, when applied to non-objective topics, is very stupid. False balance makes sense when it's applied to things like math, as obviously anyone trying to claim that 1 plus 1 3 probably doesn't know what they're doing, and could probably just be ignored, or is probably just a troll. But applying this false balance concept to things like the subjective opinion on the personal characters of political candidates, prime ministers, and presidents within democratic governments is obviously incredibly irresponsible, because all that happens when you do that is the side that pushes their propaganda more aggressively and is less tolerant of the other side ends up winning, while the side that tries to be new neutral and data-driven ironically ends up losing. The second thing that Wikipedia can improve upon is accepting the reality that secondary sources provided without primary sources is just as, if not far more abusable than primary sources without context. A primary source can at least be dissected by anyone intelligent enough to do so, but an editorialized take, or an opinion editorial that doesn't back itself up with any empirical data whatsoever, and just hides it all, is actually even less verifiable. This would result in far less bias in extremely controversial topics again, like Gamergate, when you remove all the opinionated sources from this article, what's left over are studies and analysis that actually vindicates the movement and shows that the overwhelming majority in the movement were not actually engaged in any harassment. But of course, with the rules of Wikipedia currently as they are, it allows for empirical data to be drowned out by the claptrap of hundreds of biased, low-quality journalists spewing their unsubstantiated nonsense. This is exactly the propaganda that Julian Assange warned about and why he encourages the importance of primary sources, because with Wikipedia operating like this, it's basically just contributing to the post-truth world. So unless they revise their source policy and acknowledge the fact that their perennial sources are filled with extreme bias and that this bias has been confirmed by multiple studies is directed towards the website, then we are going to continue to see all articles on Wikipedia that are even remotely political being effectively rendered more and more worthless and partisan as time goes on. Yes, that means that Wikipedia would have slightly less content because the amount of editorialized content backed up by actual empirical data when it comes to politicized topics is unfortunately not as high as it should be in this world. But in this case, I personally believe that less is more. I mean, just think about it. Would you rather have a page with 2,000 words backed up by objective and verifiable data, or 20,000 words backed up by the holy words of the ascended journalist class? Personally, I much prefer the former. Alternatively, Wikipedia could revise their NPOV policy to extend to any editorialized source that does not include primary sources. That wouldn't be ideal, but it would at least be better. But all this leaves a question. What can you do? What can we do about Wikipedia? 
Honestly, I recommend people just turn to competitors as often as possible, as competition is one of the main things that can keep organizations in check, especially since the chances of Wikipedia revising their rules to be less of a propaganda regurgitation mill is honestly pretty low considering most of the problems I just went over have been well known for years. Citizendium, for example, has a much more effective and simplified neutrality policy and less tolerance for vandals and people trying to push partisan propaganda that is present on Wikipedia. With more users that care about truth and willing to play by the more strict rules that Citizendium has, I believe Citizendium has potential if more people just give it a chance. There's also a good old Encyclopedia Britannica, which will not free of its own establishment bias is at least far more professional and less biased for political topics than Wikipedia by far. There's also Scholarpedia, which is a wiki focused almost entirely on academic primary sourced information and is mostly pretty decent quality. But honestly, the best thing people can do is just be aware of propaganda and how it operates. Assange's warnings about editorialized info not being backed up by making the data the opinions are based on public is an extremely accurate way to detect it. Because the current status quo of just blindly believing the holy words of pundits and journalists just because they work for a reliable source trademark is just not good for anyone who cares about truth. Anyways, that's all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my content, feel free to like and subscribe. Feel free to share the video with others to spread the word on why no one should be taking political articles on Wikipedia seriously here. Additional resources have been included in the description below. Till next time.